5.30 according to Verizon. So we will start our regular meeting with a roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Here. Commissioner Barwick. Here. Commissioner Webb. Here. Commissioner Stecklin. Here. Mayor Absher. Here. If you would all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, we'll move on to item number three, our public comments section. And this is where anybody can address the council for up to five minutes, subject to ordinance 3128, amended by 3134. Copies of said, said ordinances are up here by the flowers on the counter. So would anybody like to speak to the uh, council? I know you do. Anybody else other than Donnie tonight? Okay, Donnie. You know the drill now, right? You got my messages up. Yeah, so what do you want me to do? That's what I have been doing. I'll try to finish up in five minutes. I'll try to finish up in okay. Five. All right. Yeah. You tell me when to start. I'll I'll go ahead. Ready? Go ahead. Okay. Good evening. So Good I've evening. got a couple things to not say tonight. One of the things you see a lot of around town and around town and just a lot of people are talking about neighbors and so that kind of sparked me to uh, address that a little bit. You know, the, the good book says, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Not do unto others as others have done unto you, but as you would have them do unto you. And I was even, I even made a comment. Sometimes I give my cat fresh food just because I like to eat fresh food. Are you following me? And so that's, that stirs you to do right because you do what you would want them to do to you. Okay, but anyway, those, those are scriptures that are, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, now to bring this into balance about neighbors, and, uh, you know, there's a balance that's got to be brought into this because there's still correction required for your neighbor. Your neighbor just can't step all over you and you still, you, uh, I like you just the way you are. No, you gotta say, no, I don't, you know, there's a correction that's uh, required for neighborly behavior. For neighborly relationship, there's still correction. Okay, so I, I put down here, balance, correction is still required. Sometimes correction is the most neighborly thing you can do. Telling somebody what they're doing is wrong. You're going the wrong direction. That's a neighborly uh, action. Okay. Number two, you, you can't encourage wrong behavior. If you encourage someone who's going to destruction, you're not being very neighborly to them, even if it's politically correct what they're doing. You can't just be in agreement. You just can't be in agreement with someone that's going the wrong direction. Uh, you need to tell them, hey, no, that's not right. You, okay, you got people doing all kinds of stuff and everybody has known that's wrong to do for generations and then you act like that's okay to do. This man was talking about uh, the police not having to cut their hair no more. I mean, that's a little thing, but hey, if somebody don't cut their hair, I don't trust them too much. Are you following me? And so it's just reality. There's laws that are being made that are just ridiculous. Laws that are not being upkept that are just I mean, reasonable for, I mean, it's just a reality that it needs to be upkept. And, but then there's other laws that they're producing that uh, it's just ridiculous. Ridiculous laws are being kept and uh, uh, reasonable and right laws are not being kept. Okay. 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 And two, I'm going to say this. Uh, there's a need of correction sometimes just to survive in life. You've got to be correct. You've got to be corrected. But I've got to be corrected to survive. Okay. And I'll say this. The good book. In the good book, it's, it's, it's Proverbs 13, 24. It says that a parent, if you don't correct your child, you hate them. So if it gets to be all so neighborly where they want to get an order of protection on you, if you tell them they're wrong, well, where's correction at? The good book says if, if, if people don't correct each other, they hate them. It says if your, parent, if, if your mom or dad don't correct their kids, they hate them. That's Proverbs 13, 24. Okay. And that statement about, I like you just the way you are, there, there's something, a little, that neighborly stuff gets a little bit weird. I don't, it's a little strange, all that, I like you just the way you are, and I, it don't matter what you do, and you're still my good buddy, or what, well, that's not, that's not reality. Okay. Now, 
Okay, that's there. Now I wanted to define this word conspiracy because everybody uses the word conspiracy all the time like that's some kind of horrible thing. And this is a definition of conspiracy. Conspiracy is an agreement to perform together an illegal, treacherous, or evil act. A group of conspirators, number two, and number three, a combining or acting together as if, as if by evil design. Four okay. minutes. So anytime, uh, oh, it's almost always a conspiracy. They say, well, oh, that's a conspiracy theory. We're just going to downplay that and just going to, uh, uh, you know, sideline that, uh, marginalize, I think they use. But it's almost always a conspiracy. I know I've got about 30 seconds. I want to say this about conspiracy. I'm going to try to finish up before five minutes. Helps everybody. Okay. And this is about conspiracy. I, t I told you it's just an evil design. People get together and do evil things. That's a, it, it's almost always like that. You ever do something just single-handedly? People come join together to do stuff that's wrong. That's how they get it done. Okay. So this, just, I, I just want to make sure I get this scripture in. It says here in, in uh, John 7, 19, it says, didn't Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keep the law? Why do you go about to kill me? And then the pe now this is conspiracy. Why do you go about to kill me? I just I just got a thirty. Go ahead, fin finish your scripture. I, I don't want lightning to strike or okay. anything. Okay. And the people answered and said, "You have a." De they're telling the Lord He's got a devil. Who goes about to kill you? They're acting like they're not going about to kill him. And then uh. And then right here, in five more verses up, it says, and then some of them of Jerusalem said, is this not he whom, whom you seek to kill? He knew they were trying to kill him. They knew they were trying to kill him. But they were saying, oh, no, we're not trying to kill you. But they even said it themselves. Isn't this the guy who they're going about to kill? See, that's conspiracy. The people who push these conspiracy theories is just that, that, oh, that's not true or whatever. It's because there is a conspiracy. They are planning evil. A bunch of them. Okay. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, I, I could to keep it. Yeah. You're, uh, we're going to have to have a time bank or something, Donnie. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Moving on to the consent agenda, we have items A through D tonight on the agenda. Does anybody from the council wish any item A through D or sub item to be removed from the consent agenda and voted upon us as a separate item? Anybody from the audience? want us to vote on any of these items A through D separately. Okay, if not, I would uh, entertain a motion to pass the consent agenda as presented. I'll make a motion to pass the consent agenda as presented. I'll second that. Any questions or comments on any of these items A through D? Yeah, quick question, Chris. The um, full-time front desk position, yes. that's, that's a full-time position? Full And then fill in the rest of the day with uh, part time. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? <coughs> Any item A through D? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Item five, uh, police department. Uh, who's making this? Chief. Chief. Chief Fitz. It's you. Item A. Where did he go? I can't see. Oh, there he is. Okay. Grab me the paper. I thought you were hiding. No, sir. <clears throat> yes, we do have to keep our hair cut. <laughs> as proud of our department as I am, as good as our officers, I believe, are, and as good a job as they do, you know, sometimes it's only as good as sometimes the help we get on occasion, and that's why I'm speaking tonight is the help that the Marion Police Department received from one of our citizens. And without this citizen's help, this very, very important case may not have come to fruition like we had hoped it would. So I'll explain a little bit about what happened. On September 2nd, 2021, at approximately 10, 15 p.m., uh, 
the Marion PD responded to a call of a potential kidnapping investigation. And as it turned out, a young female was kidnapped from Nashville, Tennessee and brought to Marion. And our investigation led us to the house where she was being held and she didn't speak any English, so we was having a really, really difficult time communicating with this female on how she got there, who had kidnapped her, and where they possibly may be. So we tried everything we could think of within the police world to get a translator, and there were none. So one of my officers had the idea, and if anybody's ever been to La Fiesta, you know Solomon. So they had the idea, even though it was two in the morning, Let's call Solomon as he would come out. The answer I got was, I'll be right there. Not too many people would get out of bed at two in the morning and come and do something like that. So because of the assistance Solomon gave us, we was able to have a conversation with this young female, find out where she was kidnapped from and who the suspects were. And because of that, one suspect was located in Marion and arrested. The other one was found in Christopher and arrested, and she has been returned back to her family in Tennessee. So, outstanding. So, Solomon is here. Solomon, would you come up here, please? Again, I want to reiterate that your cooperation played a huge part in us being able to return this young woman to her family mm -hmm. and arrest her captors. So I have uh, a certificate to present to you, as well as a Marion Police Department challenge coin I'd like you to have. This says, a certificate of appreciation awarded to Solomon Aguiar with sincere thanks for your assistance to the Marion Police Department and the Nashville, Tennessee Metro Police Department. Your actions and selflessness were instrumental in the safe return of a kidnapped female to her family awarded this 27th day of September 2021. Here, let me hand this to you. <laughs> we appreciate you. Anything, Anything you'd like to say? Go ahead. I don't know if I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was my pleasure when I got a call. Um, it was my pleasure to um, help him out. Um, I feel really proud of myself, and I mean, I'm a little nervous to get this, but uh, I will keep this forever. Thank you so much to you yeah. and to all of you. And I'm happy because they gave me the opportunity to kind of show my skills, and I feel like it was a challenge, but I did it. And I'm so happy to, to receive this for all of you. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, Solomon. Thank you. Thank you. On? Yep, item B. Okay, um, I know we've had discussions several times in the past of how can the community and the police department, you know, kind of pull together, work together, and Assistant Chief Morrow and I put it out to the department, come to us with your ideas for this. And one of my officers came to us with what we felt was a very interesting idea. And uh, he presented it to the mayor and the commissioner, and they both wanted the rest of the council and the citizens of Marion to hear and see this. So, Jason Plichta. Appreciate you. All right, I'll try to stand back from this. Uh, Mayor, appreciate this. Commissioners, thanks for letting me come and talk to you guys tonight. Um, I'll try to make it shorter than the last time because we don't have an hour. Um, so a little bit about me before we get going. Um, I've been a police officer since 2008. I graduated in 2006 from Loyola University in Chicago with a degree in psychology. Um, I started up north, so I talked a little fast, so I apologize for that. Came down here about three years ago, completely changed my world, uh, meeting everybody in Marion. Everybody down here is so much more supportive um, than I got up north, obviously, with, with Solomon and stuff like that. Um, being up there, I was able to join the crisis intervention team, um, which what it does is it's geared more towards subjects that are having mental health issues. So we went through 40 hours of training, <coughs> specific calls that come out, suicidal subjects, any subject having mental distress, we would specifically go out to these people and try to talk to them. Uh, they gave us a little bit, some guidelines on how to talk to people, which kind of piggybacked off of my degree. Um, from there, I was able to transition into doing a peer support team up with my department. Basically, we act as counselors for our partners. They come to talk to us. 
um, all anonymously, you know, up until it gets to that point of self-harm, and then we, we send them out to other people. So now fast forward to here. Um, bringing that therapy or that psychology background to the department, uh, we went to a CIT conference and learned about what's called a therapy dog. Now what a therapy dog is, is basically it's a dog and a handler pair that go out, they're trained, and they basically just work with anybody else. Their job is to make everybody happy. That's what they do. It's different from a service dog, where a service dog is geared specifically towards one individual. A therapy dog is literally geared to everybody in this room here. The dog just walks up, all you gotta do is pet it. That's literally what it's for. Basically to help you know, bring down your stress levels, bring down your anxiety, just help people get themselves in a better spot for however long they can while they're playing with that dog or hopefully past that point. So the dog, the dog comes from a place called Paws and Stripes College down to Brevard County, Florida. So what they do down there is they take inmates that are housed at the jail, they use them to train the dogs. The dogs they get are stray dogs, owner turnover dogs, surrender dogs. Um, one of the dogs, I believe at University of Illinois, was actually a dog from uh, somewhere in the Caribbean that was uh, fortunately found alive during one of the hurricanes. Between two and three months of training, goes in with the inmates and the, the dogs down there, then the handler, the police officer, comes down and works with them for another week, then they're brought back up here. So the way I've utilized a therapy dog in my history is in 2015, I was a responding officer in a double homicide up where I came from up north. I was the only officer there, the suspect was there, the two victims were there along with other potential victims that we just got there in time to stop from. 2019, I go back up there for the trial and you know, everything was getting better you know, mentally from that point from that incident. I went up there, I was fine for the two days I was up there in my old department, they actually had therapy dogs in the courthouse. The two days I was up there, they knew I was having a hard time with this, with the whole situation. They brought the therapy dogs in and the dog just called me down right away. The entire two days I was there. I get called, it's actually now it's my turn to testify. I walk into the first set of double doors um, and just completely have a breakdown about going to testify that there's, there's two victims, deceased victims that are now I have the potential to get this guy put in jail or not. They brought that dog in, that dog calmed me down instantaneously. I mean, I was there for maybe two minutes, got up there and testified, and the jury said I was the most influential witness that they had the entire trial. There's a lot of reasons that this unit should come about um, and why I, I kind of, I brought this to the chief. Like the chief said, first off, bringing the community and the department together. There's, there's no issue, or there's no way you can't see that there's been turmoil in terms of community and police officer relations throughout the whole country. What this dog does is gets the police department out there. It gets people to come up and interact with the police department. People might not want to come up and interact with me because just because I'm a police officer. Maybe I arrested your family member, whatever I did. But just because I'm a police officer, they don't want to talk to me. Put a dog next to me, doesn't matter who I am, people want to address that dog. By addressing that dog, they're indirectly addressing me. Now we start to build that relationship and people start to see, yeah, he's a cop, but you know what? He's still a person. He's got a dog. They start asking you about the dog. You start talking to them about the dog, about their department, just about their personal life. Slowly but surely, you start bridging that gap, you know, day after day, just by doing this. Um, so the vision for the unit that I see um, is going to be going out to traumatic events we have, whether it's domestics, accident scenes, sex assault, sex abuse, anything with children involved. A lot of it's going to have to do with helping those kids talk to the investigators, to talk to us. You know, one of the things they do now in Brevard County is that when they go through the process, the dog and the handler actually go in and interview a child to see how that officer and the dog respond to the child. That's one of the things that they pride themselves on being able to do is go in and do that stuff. Um, this dog's gonna be able to go to schools. Finals week at the high school, bring it in, help, with the, help the students with anxiety issues. You know, it's gonna be able to go to nursing homes, come here to the meetings, you know, talk to, talk to the staff here in the city hall, go to the fire department, go to United, go to the flight nurses out there that I've already talked to that said they would love this program to help them out. The ways I plan on achieving this, the biggest thing is gonna be acceptance, not just from the community, the police department, the fire department, basically everybody in the city of Marion to welcome this unit in and this idea in and not just close the doors to it as, oh, it's just another dog. This dog is not like any dog we have. This is not gonna be a bite dog. It's not gonna be a drug dog. It's not gonna do any of that stuff. This is literally gonna be a dog that says, pet me, I wanna play with you, I wanna make you feel better. That's what it does. Um, ways I wanna do this is I would like to go out to the community and ask for donations uh, from various companies or basically any citizen that would like to contribute to the fund. It'd be specifically for the therapy canine unit. Uh, we're going to recurring vet bills, food bills, any other kind of cost that might come up with this. 
I've reached out to vet clinics already in town, a number of different companies to try to see who might be interested, who might be willing to help out. And I've got some, some feedback already and some companies have already been wanting to donate some stuff to us. Um, one of the things my wife helped me design last night, which I, one of the fundraisers I had is, is a t-shirt. Um, basically, it's pretty simple. It just says MPD canine therapy unit on it um, on the back. Some therapists have four paws. You know, put the, put the blue line across it. Um, you know, it, it's, it's nothing big, but I got a, um, someone willing to donate T-shirts to us. So the funds raised from that would be able to go into, you know, into this unit. Um, so there's a quick two-minute video I just want to give to you guys just so you guys can get a visual, visualization. Um, as to what the department or what this unit can actually do other than me just talking about it. This video was shot with the University of Illinois up in Champaign. Um, there are going to be two dogs in this. You're going to be Lollipop and Winston. I met Winston up at our CIT conference. Big, lovable, just slug. And that, that's what they want. Is they want these dogs to come up there and just let you pet on them. They go through, so they pull their hair, they pull their ears, anything a kid might do to make sure that dog doesn't do any harm to that kid or that person when they're seeing them. So, Cody, hit it. So he is the most calm, wonderful dog you're ever going to run into. Therapy dogs are a really good tool. There is something magical about uh, people who are with some other experience with a terrible dog and they really don't like it. At least us as a whole, we just, you know, they are in those kind of situation problems where you know, the worst thing you can imagine what happens is someone will pull your hair or your <coughs> So this is a tool that does that. We, we need to be comfort for people who are in crisis. Recently, and as much as we So if you go to our website, there is a form at the bottom that uh, you can click on to say request a therapy dog, and then we will release it. All right, and like I said, it's a tool. This is another tool we can have with the, the ever-changing mental health stuff that's going on with police in the community that we can use to kind of help us get through a lot of those situations, and not just the police and the first responders deal with, but also the community. Um, any questions? Anyone? So right now, uh, gentlemen, what I gleaned from the longer presentation was is that you're planning on this being self-sufficient in terms of not being something that the city has to fund at this point. You yes, feel sir. like you've got a head start on that, the acquisition of the service animal and the, all the other stuff, but it may require that uh, downstream a little bit, so to speak, particularly if this is successful, we may more, want more than one. But uh, I just thought you guys, we, because of that not having a general fund impact at this point, we sort of go, went ahead and green lit that project for Australplecta, but I wanted you guys to have an awareness of how creative this was and, and how, how it came to, to uh, pass and how it was presented. So uh, just that's usually the, the big question is how do we pay for it or what's the pay for on this? So I'm gonna take that off the table. He's also put a lot of, motion uh, things in motion to pay for it so 
Um, but uh, so other than the cost, what questions do you might have of him on this? I think it's a great idea. Me too. I think you're going to be very busy. <laughs> Which is fine. You know, it, if this dog gets out and gets to help people, I mean, that's essentially what our job's about anyways. Yeah. Again, this is just another tool that is going to, again, it's a multi multifaceted approach that if we can better this community however we can, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Well, I commend you for the idea and the effort and even more so for all the things before you even get, came to us with the bigger presentation that you had lined out. You guys have a copy of that, that uh, PowerPoint on your desk mm -hmm. and for the community just so that you know. It was an hour long worth of slides, but uh, at the end of it, he's got all the ways that this is going to be paid for. So, oops. Oh, dang it. It was very impressive. So I commend you for all of that. Thanks, I sir. really do. Good job. That's great. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to item 5C. Commissioner Barwick, do you want to? Yes. Uh, I want to make a motion to approve the recommendation of the chief to promote Bradley Thornton to the position of detective and assignment to the narcotics unit effective September 6th. The pay rate is consistent with the collective bargaining agreement. And just so you guys know, this isn't adding someone, it's just a replacement. We had one officer go back to patrol out of the narcotics unit, and this is a replacement for him. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any other discussion or questions on this? Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Item 6A. Brent, do you want to talk about this project a little bit or just make sure, r remind? I know this has been in the works for a while here. This, yeah, this has been. Actually, it's been put off several years, according to, to Cliff. Um, it's a water main project that he's been needing to get done for some time along Otis Street from Boulevard down to McKinley and then tying back in to Fair Street. It's a badly it's had several breaks and we've put off paving that road for some time but we're going to get in there and finally get it done we budgeted for it and planned it for this year we opened bids last wednesday and um i could did did you get the the bid tab sheet that you mm -hmm. include that in your package okay so you can see that the bids were fairly close um i recommend accepting the low bid uh, from mod ex excavating for uh one seven $173,306.06. That was the low bid. The other bids were $175,920 um, from Wiggs Excavating and Scuda Construction bid $184,554. So you can see they're pretty tight bids. Um, we talked with the um, Mod Excavating a little bit today, worked out a few details. I think we're, we're in favor of awarding them the bid for this job. Other than just it being old and having several breaks, which I presumed is, have been fixed as they've happened, what problem is this solving? Just just the age of the, the line the itself? Age of it. We don't want to continue having breaks along this line. It's one of the older lines, and, and Cliff suspects there might be even some lead pigtails off of this line. It's one of the lines that potentially could have that. They've noticed it on some of the breaks, too. So okay. we, we would be eliminating a lot of that. And we're in too close proximity to some of the sanitary sewers uh, tying back in on McKinley Street back over to Fair Street. We, it needs to be rerouted away from that, too. Okay. To six inch, I'm sorry. Go ahead. With what we're replacing, will this increase pressure or any benefits like that? I, I don't know of any necessarily increases in pressure that people will see. Tying this thing back in over to Fair Street could potentially um, give it a little bit of a better pressure uh, in, in case of a break somewhere else. May, maybe let us insulate or isolate an area a little bit better if it's tied back in over on Fair Street because that's a new main that was put in, gosh, not not that long ago when they redid Fair Street. So we're replacing a six inch with six inch, <coughs> right? Uh, yes, it's a six inch replacement. All right, so I would like to make a, a motion to approve uh, the bid for the Otis Street water main to mod excavating the amount of $173,306.06. I'll second. Any other questions? 
Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Item 7A, it would be my motion to approve the purchase of five properties as listed in the schedule in your packet um, near Concord and Midway Court. I would second that. Any questions on these? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Item 7B be my motion to approve Ordinance 3747, which is a professional service agreement with Jacob, Jacob and Klein and the Economic Development Group to establish and administer a TIF district. Second that motion. Any questions on this that's in your packet? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. We've got five individual TIF redevelopment agreements on uh, item 7D through H. I'll just ask Cody to run through the highlights of those, and then with your permission, I'm just going to read these all as one motion. So just let him highlight. You guys can ask questions if you have any on any of these. Okay. Um, item C, Ordinance 3748, a redevelopment agreement with J&H Leasing. Um, that's actually a rework of a current agreement they have um, after an audit of several of our agreements. Um, the parcel that this business, which is Jeremiah's Kitchen down on Main Street, is uh, sits in is actually borders the TIF. It's not in the TIF. So we're kind of reworking this as a sales tax agreement um, s similar to, to other ones that we have in town. We will still pay them their annual increment uh, up to their um, eligible costs, um, but those uh, will be repaid through uh, sales tax, uh, the city's 1% that it collects, not just um, real estate increment. So um, that was an error in their original agreement, and this um, ratifies that and, and makes them as whole as possible given any increment that they do create. Um, item D, uh, a redevelopment agreement with Marion Antique Mall. Um, this again is a rework of their current agreement that the council in 2011 passed. Um, they are in need of some renovation work um, and so the city is actually going to front them $15,000 of their increment uh, to do that work um, and that will uh, then capture any future eligible costs they have. Uh, will be uh, exhausted at that point, so they won't be able to submit additional costs. So we will front them that 15000 We will then capture 100% of any increment they create from here on out. Uh, there's about 12 years left in that TIF district, so there's a chance with some of the renovations that they have planned that we will be able to recapture that over that 12-year period. Uh, item E, uh, redevelopment agreement with Yellow Door Builders, as well as item F, um, those are two new construction properties at 1012 South Buchanan and 1007 Mechanic, respectively. Uh, there's not a whole lot of eligible costs there. You see 28600 That's basically for land acquisition, um, any kind of site work, engineering, planning, those sorts of things that they might have. Um, item G is a redevelopment agreement with Thomas Real Estate. Enterprises, um, local developer who is uh, purchasing up some older properties within the residential TIF will make some improvements to them um, and then plans on holding on to those and, and leasing those or renting those properties. Um, I have seen one of the properties he's done and he does a good job with those. Uh, and then item H is a redevelopment agreement with uh, JECC Investment. Um, that is uh, at 407 North Buchanan. Um, Seventeen thousand dollars is the eligible cost in that agreement, and those are just strictly renovation costs. And I believe this house will be sold um, to a private party, uh, owner-occupied establishment after uh, these reno this renovation work is done. So, all pretty straightforward. Again, all capped at those um, eligible costs. Uh, happy to answer any questions. The two houses at 1012 South, well, I say two houses, are, are the, since there's two agreements, will there be a house on each lot? There will be a house on each lot, but none of the new construction, none of the actual construction costs are considered eligible. Nothing vertical is eligible. Okay. So those are a house each at those properties. Seems like an awful small lot to put a house each on. But it's... I don't believe they've had to apply for any variances. So 85 by 85, I think, is the lot size. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, you certainly can get a house on it. Yeah. Those are pretty much the standard lot sizes in that part of town, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. I'm just excited to see a new building going on down. Yep. Exactly. Anywhere in the residential TIF. But. Yep. Hey, any other questions? Not everybody wants a big yard. No. Truth. More taxes, right? <laughs> okay. I'm going to read these as one motion then. Um, be my motion to approve the following ordinances and parties associated with those ordinances as follows. Ordinance 3748 with Jane H. Leasing, LLC. 3749 with Marion Antique Mall, Inc. 3750 with Yellow Door, Door Builders, Inc. for 1012 South Buchanan. 3751 also with Yellow Door Builders, Inc. at 1007 Mechanic. 3752 with Thomas Real Estate Enterprises, LLC. And 3753 with JECC Investment, LLC. I would second that. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yes. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Item 8A <coughs> is um, kind of self explanatory. I'll just uh, go ahead and uh, motion, make a motion to approve the zoning board's affirmation of a variance to build a garage on a vacant lot adjoining the property owner's home at 1717 Feltz Drive, which is pin 0717226002. I'll second. Okay, roll call please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Um, before I make this motion, I'll just explain it a little bit. So the uh, you guys had approved back in May in a total amount for the center part of the square renovations. This includes all the new concrete benches, pergolas, all the electrical and plumbing work needed for the fountains, the ice skating rink, um, and the fountains and the ice skating rink. But all of that infrastructure is a total uh, package. We did put that out to bid and open those bids last week. And like other construction that we're seeing, keeping in mind this planning for this has been going on for a year, as was the anticipated budget. Um, our bid, which is in your packet, which was the only bid and thus the low bid, which was of concern to me from Samron. Uh, but I did quiz the engineer and planner on this quite a bit, and she was actually pretty pleased with the amount. She thought it was going to be worse when it came through. And I asked her if she thought that, that was because we had lack of interest in the bidders or if it was just like what we've seen, you know, with these water towers and things with material costs. And she said it's just simply material costs. So the concrete, the steel, the pergolas, all that stuff has just gone up. So whether it goes back down is yet to be determined. But uh, anyway, so that is the um, reason for this request to increase this to 1.5 million, which also should include a little bit left over, because I know you asked me about this a week or two ago, to help us put new generation Christmas lights around the square. Um, unfortunately, that probably won't happen for this Christmas because it's going to be in the middle of being ripped up, I'm afraid, at that time. But nonetheless, the good news is on two fronts with this, uh, when we have enough money in the project fund to uh, pay for this. That being said, the reason is, is that the revenues that are funding that project fund are pacing, outpacing um, what was budgeted for too. So I think we're okay there. Furthermore, and we're not to the point to, to uh, propose this yet, one of the eligible uses for the American Rescue Plan Act is the portion of this that could be justified potentially that has to do with outdoor plaza. Now, I'm not talking about the whole project, probably specific to concrete and the pergolas that will assist the downtown merchants in um, outdoor seating and, and especially as it relates to food surface, is potentially, and I emphasize potentially, one of those pro uh, projects that we could include in the ARPA funding. I am get totally guessing, but I'm thinking maybe as somewhere between two and three hundred thousand dollars potentially could be paid for out of out of that, uh, but we've got to, at some point in the future, we're still trying to vet all of that out, figure out what projects that we can present to you guys first and then the general public for comment on. 
but we're thinking that may be one that will help us in that regard. So anyway, that's that's the story behind it. They're ready to get going. I'm certainly ready to get going on it. Um, but that's the story. On the second page, I want to point something out to you that's not exactly clear. The second, this is the page I'm talking about that has the the backup to the the building. You see that one? Mm -hmm. Those lettering, that letter, the letters that are about three feet high there that say Marion are not part of this bid. That's just what she envisioned. I think that's terrific and make a great photo opportunity, especially with Tower Square Plaza there on the building in the back. But I'm going to try to be seeking somebody out that maybe would consider donating the cost for those. I just, out of full transparency, I wanted to point out that the Tower Square Plaza lettering and the Marion lettering is not included in this bid. That was just a visual that she thought would be pretty cool, which I tend to agree. That's my spiel. So Sam Ron came in at 989, and maybe I missed it, but the reason for going from 125 to 1.5? 1, 1 the fountain equipment, uh -huh. which we've already ordered, and the uh, under that previous authorization that you gave me, and the ice skating rink are the other two big elements in that, which is not part of this bid. Mm -hmm. That okay. stuff adds up to about 1.3. If I'm going by memory, I think it's 1.36. That only gives us $140,000 to play with there. I'm gotcha. anticipating some stuff comes up in that process of this, so I've just so that rounded part, it up. That part was not included in the in Samron's price, the, correct? The f no, the the uh, the actual fountain. They're building the fountain basins. Mm -hmm. And all the equipment, the plumbing and electrical that goes to the actual fountain equipment we bought from directly from the fountain vendor so as to not see it marked up. Um, the ice skating rink is the same way. There's just basically a single vendor out there for what we needed that will put that um, in that footprint. And there's just there was no need to ask somebody else just to get the same quote we could and just mark it up. So, sure. but that stuff is. Um, uh, it's another 300, what did I say, 360, 300, about $370,000 is the equipment, the actual fountain heads with which there are many, and the ice skating rink. So that gets us to about one point, let's just say 1.37, 1.36. So that leaves $130,000, $140,000 to finish the entire project. And we've got some other stuff we're wanting to do as it relates to the alleys lighting them up yeah. and so it's just a little bit of extra budget there to to finish off some of those those touches okay thank you okay uh i never made a motion so that would be my uh, motion to approve the increase of the budget for the tower square renovations from one and a quarter million which were approved on May 24th to 1.5 million and approved the general contractor bid by samron as presented I'll second that. Any other questions, comments, suggestions on this? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Uh, you want to read 9B since sure. I'm going horse? I'd like to make a motion to approve the hire of Tina Marl to the full time position of Deputy 911 slash EMA slash GIS Director at $55,000 per year, exempt benefit position. I'll second. Okay, just for the public or whoever might be paying attention and listening, so Tina Morrow is the current, but retiring any day now, right? When is she retiring? 30th? 29th. 29th? 29th. I actually wasn't, I was just making a comment, but that's okay, bring her up here. When are you retiring? Uh, my last official day is October 29th. But when are you got some time, benefit time in there you're taking? So when is your last day on duty in uniform? My last day is June off, October 21st. Oh, okay. So less than a month, team is going to be leaving that position. One of the things that, um, as we were reimagining some things that the city desperately needs to do, so William Barrett is our current. 911 EMA director. Um, T 
Tina will be working in his office, which will give William some time. He's kind of been doing the GIS, which is all the maps. If you've ever been on the city website or on the city app, you can see that we where we can show water mains and sewer mains and all kinds of manholes and and lift stations and all the stuff. Well, there's we're not quite up to where we need to be with all that, and there's a whole lot more yet to be mapped. And come to find out, we didn't know, or I didn't know this at the beginning. William is an expert in that and has a degree in GIS mapping. And why we never fully utilized that, I don't know. So uh, William is not s set on this, but he's probably got about five years plus or minus left with the city. And so uh, Tina wasn't quite ready to not serve the city in some way. And so this gave us an opportunity to both retain her services, which makes lots of sense, and capitalize on William's set of skills so that five years from now, we were in a much better shape when it comes to our mapping and, and that kind of thing. So this is kind of what we all put together. And um, so that's kind of what this is about. If you're confused as to why Tina is gone, now Tina's back. So is that fair enough? Did I explain it right? Do you have something? Um, one other comment. During the month of November, before she starts this position, which will be at the end of November, she will still be available on an on-call, as-needed basis to uh, the police department for any of their ongoing needs or understandings of uh, everything that she does in the uh, 96 hours a week she works. So uh, <laughs> just for clarification purposes. Yeah, which is another way of, of saying that Tina needed a break in between one job and the other one, but we needed Tina still, in case those are new, not our new guys, but the guys in those new positions needed her assistance. So we'll, it, we'll pay her on an hourly basis as needed during that interim, if that's acceptable with all of you. Okay, you had a motion and a second, right? Yes. Any questions? All right, roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Okay, Jim, let's start with you on commissioner reports, please. Yeah, uh, uh, continuing sidewalks. I've uh, been working on some sidewalks down the Boynton Street area, among other places. Uh, drainage issues, trying to get things ready for winter with the rainy season coming on. Uh, uh, been doing some ditching uh, in the, on Oakshire Street. So, uh, other than that, the cemetery, uh, just mowing and uh, uh, continuing with the barrels and everything's going good out there. So that's all I have to report. Thank you. John? All right, Water Department had uh, four new service taps for the month, three water leaks, uh, 12 services were updated, working on landscaping and concrete from the prior leaks. Uh, new water and sewer customers in the month of August, we had 86. Um, couple of uh, announcements. One, I wanted to give a shout out and kudos to the Marion High School football team uh, for assisting in the uh, collection of all the items for the hurricane victims. Uh, thanks to the Hub and the Civic Center and Black Diamond for assisting that as well for all the things going down to St. Charles Parish. Uh, I want to remind everybody that this weekend from 9 until noon, <coughs> the City of Marion will be having electronic recycling at the Marion Training Center. Uh, Marion's been doing this since 2015. Last year, we diverted 34,362 items from the local landfill. Uh, these are the breakdown of items. These are not pounds of items. Uh, two semi-trailers full of stuff. And when I, when I saw these numbers, I even asked, asked Terrence, I said, the, the, how in the world is this possible that, that there's this many you know, broken pieces of equipment around in the city? But 3,522 broken CRT television sets. 9,236 CRT television sets, 3,083 flat screen TVs, 2,459 of the old wooden console <laughs> television. If you remember these things, there were still 2,400 of them around that people needed to get rid of this past year. So uh, it's a great, great thing. It's a great thing for the city. I mean, this is something that I'm sure everybody here and everybody out there deals with, you've got something broken sitting in your garage or your basement that, oh, well, you'll get it fixed someday. Well, guess what? By the time you get around to fixing it, it's obsolete and it's not worth fixing anymore. So um, take advantage of this. That's this weekend, 9 to noon, uh, at the training center at 211 East Boulevard. Uh, okay, trivia. This is, this is the big trivia for the month. 
Okay. Um, the continent of Antarctica, is it considered a wetland or a desert? Jeez. I'm going to go with desert. Just you think it's a wetland? You're incorrect. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> it is considered a desert. Uh, what special prize does Doug get? <laughs> Doug, you'll have to see Terrence. He'll get you your, your free gift. <laughs> Uh, eight inches of annual precipitation in the coastal regions of Antarctica. Uh, the inland portion of Antarctica actually receives even less, qualifying it as a desert situation. So less than eight inches a year. Is it dry ice? Wow, that's good. That's good. That's all, wah, wah, wah. That's all I have. <laughs> good trivia, John. Yeah. Thank okay, you. Commissioner Barwick. Well, I have uh, some good news to report from the uh, fire department our officers that went to Louisiana are back home and they made it back safely and everything is good uh, they worked really hard the branch chief from Mabus division that's the group that requested that our officers go down there told our chief that Marion puts out the most professional well-trained firefighters he has ever seen which we knew that already but uh, just proud of them and uh, glad they glad they're back home and no problems. Great. Doug? Don't really have anything other than the, uh, I was really intrigued by the uh, gas tax chart that you sent out the other day, Glenn. I, I'm just, just amazed that we actually sell that much gas within the city of Marion. Um, the two top, Pilot and Loves, basically we collect a little over a hundred thousand dollars each year from them and that's that's the tip of the iceberg our total income or total gas tax collected for FY 20 was almost six hundred thousand dollars just amazing to me so that's that's fantastic I think okay uh, from the senior citizens or club 60 a name of which Commissioner Steckman is offended by <laughs> Club 65 would be better. <laughs> everybody, everybody got it? Okay. For the next five years, then I'll have to raise it. <laughs> uh, Jill at, the, at Club 60 reports that it, their activity is booming. They are offering both dine-in and carry-out meals. That was a request from one of our constituents that we had to figure out how to do, and I'm so glad that they did figure that out. A lot of volunteers that are involved in doing that. Again, keep in mind that they did 38,000 carryout meals during the pandemic, so the there was a request to continue that even though dine-in was available. Hopefully that won't mean another 38,000 are going out the door, but nonetheless, a very important, a, uh, very important service that they're providing to our constituents. Um, she does request that patrons call in to RSVP because they're completely selling out of food on some days and that to tell everybody again that masks are required indoors. You can find the monthly menus and activity calendars on Club 60, the Facebook page, and the website, or in the local Marion newspapers. She wanted everybody to know that they're adding new activities to our calendar each month, and that there's someone, something that almost everyone will enjoy, our senior drum exercise class, and yes, that's exactly what it sounds like, drums uh, exercise class is a really cool, huge hit. And if you guys would like to see that, you need to go look on the videos on their Facebook page because it's pretty, it's quite a hoot, actually. Uh, this Wednesday, they'll be hosting a lunch and learn covering Medicare basics, changes in Medicare, and the upcoming enrollment with Karen Cripps from the Insurance House. They'll also be hosting Marion Farmer's Market Wednesday morning, and we'll have Egyptian Area, a Egyptian Area Agency on Aging. Uh, they are to distribute free $25 farmers market vouchers to senior citizens. They need to simply bring your driver's license or ID to receive one. Do you, do you normally carry your ID with you, John? Club 60 is also working with Health Direct Pharmacy to host a COVID boosted booster shot clinic at, her, at the center for seniors who've already had their two Pfizer brand vaccines. So again, this is only a booster shot for Pfizer and they will announce that date soon. And lastly, they are having their uh, fall pie fund fundraiser. I cannot stop getting tongue-tied tonight. 
All proceeds do benefit Club 60. Orders are due by Monday, October 18th. And there are $20 per whole pie. And listen to these. Pumpkin pie, caramel, apple, caramel, apple pie, Reese's pie, wow, rhubarb pie, my dad's favorite, strawberry rhubarb pie, not my dad's favorite, pecan or pecan or any other way you want to pronounce it, pie, chocolate Oreo silk pie, which is my wife's favorite. So it looks like I'm going to be spending about $60. <laughs> so anyway, again, October 18th. Can you post this on our website as well as the app or something? I know that it was pretty popular last year. So, And that's the only report from my departments that I got, I think, this meeting. So do not have a reason for closed session tonight. Anything else to come in, in front of the council and the miscellaneous on the agenda? I have one thing I forgot to announce. Um, for those of you that uh, aren't doing anything tomorrow, tomorrow is the honor flight uh, from the Marion Williams County Airport. Uh, we leave out a little before 6 a.m. Uh, if you've never been to a welcome home, I'd encourage everybody to come out and support that. It's been over eight, been about 18 months since we had one of these. And uh, especially if you've got kids, um, it's something for them to see. And, and really, you can really feel and see the, uh, the patriotism uh, and the thankfulness that these vets receive. And that's what it's all about. So I'd encourage you to come out to the uh, airport tomorrow night. Should land around 8 or 8.30, but the things start about 6. So I think there's also um, Rides Mass Transit is providing transportation from where? Sam's Club and uh, Cornerstone Church, I believe, and there's an, a third church. If you just go to the Veterans Honor Flight Facebook page, and it tells you yeah, where that, that is. That might be a good idea for it people to stop there and get transportation over. You won't park anywhere close if you don't get there early. Yeah. So. Okay, anything else? Come before the council. If not, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I'd make a motion that we would adjourn. I'll second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>